to install and initialize Firebase in our Angular application, the Angular Fire team provided us with a handy schematic. To use it, we can open the terminal in the root of our application and type ng add Angular Fire. Here it's going to first install the Angular Fire package. And once the package is installed, it's going to ask us which of the Firebase APIs we're going to use. This so that it can automatically initialize all of those in our application. For this application, we're going to use Firebase Authentication. We're going to use the Cloud Firestore database. We're going to use Cloud Storage. And we're going to deploy this application to Firebase Hosting. If you are logged into the CLI, it's going to show you your email account and the list of projects that you have. If not, it's going to prompt you to log into your Google account. Here, I can choose a Firebase project to use for this application, or I can directly create a new Firebase project. We are going to give it a unique ID. And now it's creating our Firebase application in the Google Cloud Platform. We are going to select the default Firebase deployment URL that they give us, and it's asking us to create an application. This application we are creating is the web application that's going to be deployed to Firebase Hosting. And once it's done, you see that it just created and updated a bunch of files for us. So let's review. It created the Firebase RC file, where it's just showing us the project that we are using. It went into our environment files, and it added our Firebase credential. The Firebase.json has the configuration for our hosting application. And lastly, in our app module, it went ahead and imported everything it needs and initialized it. So we can see that it imported the Firebase app provider and initialized our application. The initialize app method takes our Firebase credentials. These are the credentials that the schematic added in the environment file. It also initialized authentication, Firestore, and storage, since these are the APIs we told the CLI that we were going to use. When we ran our Angular Fire schematic, it also created a Firebase application for project for us. To see our application, we are going to go to console.firebase.com google.com here you're going to see all of the firebase projects that you have and you can see the one we just created that's called egghead task list example this is the firebase console where you're going to be able to see all of the services that you're using in your firebase application for us we are going to use authentication we are going to use the firestore database we're going to use cloud storage First, we're going to click into authentication and we're going to make sure that we have one authentication method available. For that, we're going to click on get started and we're going to enable the email and password provider. With this, we're going to be able to create users with email and password. If you in the future want to add more authentication methods, you first need to enable those providers here. Now we are going to go into the Firestore database and we are going to create a database. We are going to select start in test mode and what it's going to do is it's going to create Firebase security rules that are going to let you read and write to your database for the first 30 days without issues. Because this is enough time for you to practice in development and then create proper security rules. Then we are going to go into storage and we are going to get started creating a storage bucket. Same as with Firestore, we are going to start this one in test mode. These are the main three services that we are going to use. You can take some time to explore through them so that you can see everything that they have. Cloud Firestore is a NoSQL 
document-oriented database. It has two main types of data, and they are documents and collections. Documents are the objects that you store in the database. So in this example, we have a list of tasks, and each task has its properties. This is a task document. And a collection is the name we give to a list of documents. In our case, this is a list of tasks. We are going to pull that list of tasks into our application. For this, we've created a tasks component that's going to have a header. It's going to have a content area. And in that content section, it will have a list that will have the tasks. And for each task, we are going to show the task title and the task description. Now, to get our tasks from Firebase, we are going to go into our class. Here, we are going to create an interface for our task. We'll start with something simple, only the properties that we need right now, the ID, the title, and the description. Then, we are going to import Firestore from Angular Fire and we are going to inject it into the constructor. Now we are going to create our tasks observable. And this is going to be an observable of an array of tasks. To get our task collection from Firestore, we are going to use the method collection data. Collection data takes as a parameter a reference to where it's going to get the data from. We get that by creating a reference to a collection. For that, we use collection. Collection takes two parameters. First is the instance of Firestore. We can get that from this dot Firestore. And the second parameter it gets is the path to where the data is. So in this case, is tasks. We can go into the database and you can see that the collection is tasks. I'm getting an error here because collection data returns an observable of an array of document data. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove this from here and I'm going to cast this as an observable task instead. Now we are able to go back into our HTML and we're going to add the ng4 directive here. We're going to say for each task of task, and we're going to pass the async pipe since this is an observable. In Angular, the async pipe takes care of subscribing and unsubscribing from this observable. Now, if we save it, you see that now we have two tasks here, and that's the number of tasks that we have here in the database. So we're going to replace this one. We are going to say this is task.title. And here we are going to show task.description. And now you can see them rendering the page. 